Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Tuesday, May 26th, uh, 2020 um, Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, I'll read the agenda. At 7 o'clock, we'll have citizens' input. At uh, 7.05, we'll have a COVID-19 informational update. 7.15, we have a phased reopening plan for Town Hall. Um, 7.25, we have a uh, joint uh, meeting with the Board of uh, Planning Board to reappoint uh, an associate member. 7.30, uh, we're gonna discuss uh, the fiscal year 2021 Board of Selectmen schedule, meeting schedule. 7.35, uh, we're gonna go over the town manager evaluation. 8 o'clock, uh, assistant town managers update. 8.10, town managers update. Uh, 8.20, selectmen's update with some new business and some old business. And then we have some action items. And I guess for the last time, we'll have Dave lead us. <laughs> and you gotta turn this way, Dave. <laughs> turn this way, <laughs> we purposely did, just the national update. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dave's last meeting, not because we know he's going to lose the election in two weeks, it's, he's not running. <laughs> um, any, do we have anything uh, sent to us for citizens' input? Okay, thank you. Um, we'll do a COVID-19 update, Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, good evening, everyone. And um, so tonight's uh, new figures are that we released as of 4 o'clock this afternoon are we've had 105 cases of COVID-19 in Foxborough since the beginning on March 15th. Uh, 79 people have recovered. Total of 15 current uh, positive cases in the town. Uh, that's up one since this morning. So these, these numbers are latest as of 4 o'clock today. Um, a total of 10 people have been lost in the follow-up phase and 798 people have tested negative uh, since uh, that testing began as well. Total of uh, two people have remained hospitalized, though that, is num that number is down. Uh, we had, it was up to as high as four in the past week, and, those, and two people in the past few days have, have, uh, have come home as a result of that, so that's good to see that. Uh, and we've had one person die as a result of COVID-19 complications. Uh, in Norfolk County, the numbers are, are, remain at, uh, are, are currently at 7,000. 863 cases, 791 deaths associated with those cases in Norfolk County. In Massachusetts, uh, 93,693 cases in total. And, um, and as, of, uh, as of 4 o'clock today, there were 422 new cases um, and, uh, and there were 57 new deaths as a result of COVID-19. So, uh, but the numbers are based upon the article I just read from the Boston Globe. Numbers do continue to trend in the right direction, so it's good to see that. Uh, that, that kind of news happening at this point. Um, just a, a couple things on a local front that I wanted to talk about. Uh, first is that the fact the town of Foxborough is interested in knowing how we can better serve our business community during the COVID-19 outbreak. At this time, the town has the opportunity to pursue funding in order to create a local micro-enterprise grant program. The micro-enterprises are businesses with five or fewer employees, one of which is the owner in order to determine the amount of the prospect, prospective funding requests and how the program will operate if funded, we need to know more about the businesses, including microenterprises in Foxborough. We're all asking, we're asking all businesses in town to complete the survey, even larger ones, as we anticipate additional funding programs up, up, opening uh, up during the COVID-19 recovery phase. This type of information is critical to, to provide justification for funding for the Foxborough businesses. The survey will help us identify and support the need of our, commu our business community. Your responses will only be shared by anonymously or in, the, or in the aggregate. The survey should take about five to 10 minutes to complete and, we, and, and can be found on the town's website under news and announcements and has been posted to the social media pages as well. Survey will be available until 5 p.m. this Friday, May 29th. Uh, please contact Planning Director Paige Duncan at pduncan at foxboroma.gov or contact her at 508-543-1250. That's 508-543-1250 if you have any questions. And then um, also we, we, one of the things you'll be talking later on tonight about, um, uh, and actually on Thursday, uh, during the, the, uh, the, the ramp up phases is how we can deal with, with outdoor dining, uh, trying to help the local businesses to the greatest extent possible. 
Um, the planning board is working on this phase. Also, it will come back to the Board of Selectmen for, for consideration as well. Um, there are two phases. One is just to get the, the businesses open if they're interested in doing outdoor dining, at least get some, get some, some activity going in the downtown. Uh, the other part is the alcohol piece, which is being worked on by State Senator Feeney, who's filed the legislation to try and uh, work around the, the existing ABCC regulations where uh, if you wanted to uh, alter your premises, you have to go in front of the ABCC with those plans. The, the legislation he filed would actually alter that so that it would just be a local approval only during this phase, and uh, folks could actually have that process done a lot quicker based upon that, that process. That's making its way through the Senate. It's also making it, and then it'll make its way to the House, and then uh, it's my understanding, too, that uh, Representative Barros has signed on as a co-sponsor of that bill as well. So uh, we will see uh, that hopefully move through the legislature rather sooner rather than later and then get to the governor's desk for approval. The sooner that happens, obviously, the better it is for everybody here in Foxborough. And then also, uh, just on the, on a as a matter of some of the uh, reopening information, uh, Mike will be providing us with a, with a full detailed uh, plan as, as what we've been working on here in Foxborough for the past uh, few weeks, trying to get our recovery plan, uh, re reopening plan underway. Uh, it actually touches upon, touches upon all the major departments and locations, and uh, and then also um, uh, talks about how we can bring bring employees back to work and where we started to do that. Uh, we're at the 25% phase now. Where we're actually I think we're actually exceeding that in some cases, uh, up to about 18 people in total in, in town hall at this point, Mike. All right, so we were we're working on the other locations as well, and uh, we're we're meeting all the requirements that's forth by the state in last week's uh, guidance that they, they, that they provided. The Reopening Advisory Board released their report on May 18th on the reopening of Massachusetts and included new, sec new sector-specific protocols that describe policies, procedures, and best practices that particular industries should follow to decrease the risk of COVID-19 transmission. Businesses self-certify so that they are complying with the new rules by developing a COVID-19 control plan and displaying a signed att attestation poster in a place on premises visible to employees and to visitors. For operations to open, they are required to complete self-certification. Uh, required materials for business to self-certify are located on mass.gov mass reopening and include COVID-19 control plan templates, which must be retained on premises and, be, and provided in the event of an inspection. A compliance attestation uh, posted to, the post, to be posted in a location visible to employees and visitors indicating a completed COVID-19 control plan and other posters and signs describing rules for maintaining social distancing, hygiene protocols, as well as cleaning and disinfection. It is important to note that, business, that businesses that have been operating to provide essential services as defined in the governor's executive order may remain open and had, and have been, and, and had until May 25th to comply, May 25th, 2020, to comply with the general workplace safety standards as well as the industry sector specific protocols, which Mike will, will touch upon in his presentation in a few minutes. Links related to this and other COVID-19 related information can be found at the Board of Health's COVID-19 website uh, at foxborough.ma.gov. Um, and uh, on Monday, 20, uh, May 25th, the following businesses were allowed to reopen. Um, auto dealerships, car washes, um, uh, drive-in movie theaters, uh, barber shops and hair salons by appointment only. I managed to get my hair cut yesterday, by the way. Uh, I, was, I, got, I, was, I, got, I got one of the early appointments, which worked out well. Uh, and office spaces, uh, and lab space, libraries, um, and curbside pickup and delivery only, uh, pet grooming, curbside drop-off, uh, that includes curbside drop-off, retail stores, curbside pickup and delivery only, uh, outdoor recreation as described above. And the Board of Health is waiting for state guidance for other sectors opening later on as it becomes available. Uh, there was some confusion, confusion about some local retail establishments being open. Uh, that has since been clarified, and uh, it, is, it is curbside pick, uh, pickup and delivery only at this time. Information about purchasing hygienic and protective supplies for the reopening of workplaces can be found uh, online at the Mass.gov website. Uh, these resources are provided to help inform employees and employees about supplies needed to return to workplace and connect businesses with manufacturers and distributors in order to operate in reopening phase one and all future phases, uh, certain supplies are required. Um, there are a number of, of uh, other um, uh, areas that are open, particularly in the area of environmental affairs. Uh, a lot of the outdoor spaces are open, but certainly guidelines have to be followed in all cases. 
So that should come as no surprise to anyone. Um, and um, in last week, the CDC released updated interim guidance on, for restaurants and bars. This guidance provides consideration for businesses in the food service industry on ways to maintain healthy business operations and a safe and healthy work environment for employers while reducing the risk of COVID-19 spread for both employees and their customers. Employees should follow applicable occupational safety and health administration, uh, otherwise known as OSHA, and CDC guidelines for businesses to, uh, to plan and respond to COVID-19. Massachusetts, <coughs> excuse me, further guidance for restraints are still pending. And that's a, that's a that it, by the way is a allergy cough, not <laughs> nothing more than that. Just want to make that clear. Um, and on May 20th, 21st, 2020, the Bureau of Infectious Disease and Laboratory Sciences issued mold and Legionella opening guidance, which uh, which we, you can go to cdc.gov for more information on that. So those are the key uh, areas that I wanted to touch upon. Um, obviously, we are uh, still in the uh, phase where we are trying to get people uh, back to work and also to get people uh, safe and remaining safe. And uh, particularly as things start to open up, it's really important that we maintain certain guidelines, uh, safe distance guidelines, wearing masks, et cetera, because it's really important that we don't get into a situation where we see another, a secondary phase and in some cases even a third phase. So we, I think we need to continue to, to uh, take those important steps. I know that I just see Deputy Chief Kenevin is, is going to be joining us shortly as well uh, to talk a little bit more about, more about this. So at this point, Mr. Chairman, if it's okay with you, I'd like to turn it over to Mike Johns, who will talk about the, re, the phased reopening plan that we have for Foxborough. Yeah, Mike, before you start, we, um, <coughs> with multiple <coughs> phases of reopening um, laid down by um, uh, our uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we thought um, adding in a section after uh, Bill's COVID-19 update, sort of like uh, an update on our reopening plan because uh, with the various um, phases. So uh, Mike's going to have a little uh, opportunity to uh, catch us up with uh, what the town is doing with uh, the various plans. So um, this is a 14 page Plan for the town of Foxborough, uh, particularly the, the municipal side. And um, this is something that we sent around to all employees and the board. It is a document that we had hoped to have done by May 17th, but at that point, we didn't know what the, what the state guidelines were going to be um, as far as a May 18th opening. So uh, mm -hmm. we continue to work on it throughout this week. Um, in this document are guidelines, procedures, and processes to stop the spread of COVID-19 while restaffing workplaces in preparation um, for reopening the, uh, the buildings to the public when permissible and when it's safe to do so within stri uh, stringent gu guidelines. You know, from CDC, uh, from the governor and his staff, from the Mass Department of Public Health, and of course from the Foxborough Board of Health. Throughout this pandemic, we have remained committed to being reasonable in dealing with extenuating circumstances of our valued employees relating to coronavirus school and daycare closures, closures and responsive to the needs of our residents and local businesses, providing quality public services to the best of our ability under the conditions that we all continue to endure. So this is a, a phased plan. So the, the governor has laid out a four phase plan. Um, ours is, is a five phase with uh, phase zero uh, coming up to where, where we were yesterday. So today is the first day of phase one for us. Um, during phase zero, we kept the public safety, public works and town hall completely open. And, um, and continue to service all essential services. Um, that being said, the buildings were closed to the public and there, were, there are some services that we regularly provide that we were not able to during this time while many of our employees were uh, working remotely. We have in this building, Town Hall, we have 33 employees that work here regularly and we had on average 14 employees daily. Some staggered such as the town manager and, and myself doing alternating days so, with, so that we couldn't both get sick at the same time. Um, and similarly with our, with our uh, chiefs and deputies, um, you know, with the same intention. 
Uh, we've had staffs such as our health uh, department, building department, and, and all the staffs through the buildings that have done similar thing, either staggering their, their hours, their days, um, or their, their place of work to make sure that the entire staff couldn't uh, get sick at once, uh, which would prohibit us from providing the essential services that uh, the town needs and that we are committed to, uh, to, to providing. Um, whenever possible, employees have been working remotely. Some of the remote work has been to accommodate families with children home due to school and daycare closures, while other employees have been urged to remo remotely stagger shifts, uh, as I mentioned, work off hours and alternate work, alternate work from home and the office to promote um, safe social distancing and decrease the likelihood of virus spread. <coughs> Um, currently, the, the governor has approved 25% occupancy, and this is an area where there has been some confusion. So this is 25% of the office space occupancy of a, of a building. So this part of the building doesn't count. The hallways don't count. So what we have in town hall is um, the square footage allows us to have 89 person occupancy total and 25% of that lands us at 22 people. So we've come up from our daily average of 14 employees here per day up to, as of today, up to 18. So we have room to grow by another uh, four employees, which we plan to do over the next um, week or week and a half, um, and until the, the governor raises the bar up above 25% which I know, um, you know, he's making his decisions based on the, on the data, the health data on what's coming in. So um, in this plan, we've identified precautions, self-screening processes, and risk mitigation procedures that will be applied as we move forward. This plan is a living document, which we know will have amendments and updates uh, to follow. And that's the way we're treating it. So as I mentioned during phase zero, that was uh, all along, ever since the start of the, the pandemic hit our region, uh, we continued to provide public safety, as I mentioned, public works, uh, town hall services, and, and human services. <clears throat> um, at this point, as I mentioned, we're, we're starting to bring employees back to the workplace and we've, we have felt that this has been important to do uh, as a phased approach for a number of reasons. One, because we know there are some folks that we can still get all of their work product with them remote. Um, and two, because we think if we bring back people gradually, um, this is a little bit of a shock to our system, just as it will be to any of the, the commercial workspaces and other folks where, uh, other places where people work. Uh, we haven't seen some of our folks in two months. We're communicating with them daily. We're getting their work product. We're logging their hours. But face-to-face, -face, in many cases, we haven't seen them other than by uh, Zoom meetings, which um, has been an interesting adventure. We found that we can pack twice as many meetings into the same amount of time. I think that's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Anyways, on to our daily self-certification. This is in every workplace throughout um, the municipal buildings within town, every employee must uh, self-certify to their supervisor that they have no signs of a fever or temperature of above 100.3 degrees Fahrenheit or a cough or difficulty breathing within the past 24 hours. They also must self-certify to their supervisor that they're not aware of having close contact with any individual diagnosed with COVID-19. And there are a number of co um, caveats to that close contact, which is spelled out uh, within this plan. And also, they have not been asked to self-isolate or quarantine by the health care provider or by a local public health official. We've gone into great detail on social distancing, um, such as we're doing during these meetings. Um, where we've even, some departments have actually taken and taped around the, the desk area so that they know where that six, six foot uh, social distancing is. Um, the folks that have worked here and in the other buildings right along have grown comfortable as the folks in this room have with working at a distance. Uh, we feel that some of the folks who 
Uh, we have not worked next to in, in the last two months, uh, nine weeks actually, um, are going to have a level of comfort, um, you know, uh, being able to come back into a place where they know there are rigid guidelines and physical barriers put into place, uh, both with their coworkers as well as with the public when the public is, uh, is able to come back into our public buildings. Um, face coverings is, you know, something we're, we're seeing in the grocery store, the, 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 the drug store and, and in any public places, and that's something that will be uh, mandatory inside of this building. Um, folks inside of their own workspace, as long as they're socially distanced, um, within their office, uh, will be allowed to take their face covering off, uh, but once they enter any of the hallways or, or, or public areas, um, we'll have to wear that just as the public entering this building will have to. And we'll have signage and posters <clears throat> in both the hallways as well as on our, um, on our website and on the doors entering the buildings, um, you know, saying what is, um, what is recommended by all of our health professional organizations. Another physical barrier that will be noticed in our, in our municipal build buildings will be uh, plexiglass uh, barriers. Those will be put up at the counters where we uh, provide service to folks. That'll be in the, the DPW building, um, the library, the, the Council on Aging, this building, and, and so forth. Um, the same uh, plexiglass barriers will be used also at elections for our election workers. Um, and also at a town meeting as people are getting checked in to, to move into town meeting, you know, which is another area we're waiting for, for guidance on and, you know, more to come on that. Um, we're not authorizing employees to use another employee's workspace or work implements um, without authorization and without, without cleaning. A uh, similar thing is done be, being done with vehicles. We're having one employee per vehicle. Those Vehicles are being sanitized by the employees before they get into them and after they leave them, just to be you know, extra sure that they're, that they're clean. Um, we are avoiding face-to-face -face meetings to the extent possible, and we're, we're encouraging that we do it by video conference, um, you know, by audio, by, um, and by any other electronic means. And of course, we're, we're limiting to the 10-person uh, maximum at all uh, meetings. We are uh, sanitizing the buildings on a daily basis. We've got these ionizing machines that uh, they come in at 7 a.m. in in scrubbing you know, each of the each of the workplaces, <clears throat> and then there'll be there'll be cloths and um, and spray bottles with sanitizing material so the employees in the building can can clean the high touch areas such as doorknobs and, and counters during the day. Um, then we get into department specifics, and uh, the, the six areas we touch on are Town Hall, Department of Public Works, Buildings, Public Safety, uh, the Boyden Library, Council on, All, Council on Aging and Human Services, the Senior Center, and then the Recreation Department. And there are, are extensive lists in each of those different six sections, uh, but I will touch on a, a couple of them. In Town Hall, um, much of what I just um, read to you will apply as it does to all buildings. Additionally, we're working on a plan for our, for our greeter desk. Uh, we're not going to have our senior greeters back in the, into the building um, at any time soon, although I'm sure there are many of them that are eager get, to get in here. For their safety, uh, we're going to have an alternate plan, uh, which we haven't, we're still working on. And we'll make sure that we have tele telephone service there. Um, part of the, the reason for needing to man that, um, that post is to make sure that people coming in are um, you know, doing that self-certification, that they are coming in with a mask. Okay, on to Department of Public Works. They've got a, a four-page extensive list. I'll touch on a couple of highlights. I mentioned the, the vehicles already, um, you know, the, the sanitization, the materials on hand, and the, and the daily self-certification and the issuance of uh, personal protective equipment um, for, for those employees. Um, they, they 
They will be taking walk-in service for permits and inspections via telephone um, in the vestibule without folks going into the main part of the DPW office building. Um, now for public safety, during phase zero or what we've just come through, the state fire marshal suspended some of the required inspections and uh, permits and is expected during the next two phases of this plan that, um, that those will be required inspections and that we'll get back to being able to catch up with some of those required fire inspections. The library also has a three-page extensive plan um, that has been issued to all of their employees and one of the next things they're looking to do um, in, in addition to the online services is to provide, provide curbside pickup so that folks uh, will be able to check out actual you know, hardcover materials but then when those are checked in, there'll be a 72 hour quarantine period before those materials can be you know, recirculated. Okay, Council on Aging, throughout this period, um, since the start, the human services, um, they have been providing um, uh, daily calls, um, you know, wellness checks, and they've actually supplemented um, the, the calls with the remainder of their staff that, um, you know, like the transportation services have, were suspended. But those folks that do, were doing transportation were in on the all hands effort to make calls um, to, to check on the folks in our community. And I think that actually has increased the, um, you know, the volume of uh, of uh, needs for call for service that they found so they're actually responding to that and the last section is the recreation department um, you know that's one of the things that is in limbo uh, looking for what the summer program is going to look like what we're getting from the state at this point is that there is going to be a limited limited uh, summer program starting sometime around mid-july we're still waiting for guidance but it'll be at a far reduced a uh, number from what we're used to, you know, from the 300 down to something like 75 so with all of the uh, social distancing, uh, cleaning materials, and, um, you know, and, and hygiene protocols put into place. Um, and, of course, they'll have, uh, you know, the, the, you'll, they'll uh, be expecting folks to show up with the, the, the face coverings as, as with all the departments covering mouth and nose and gloves will be available. I will say that while we're making gloves available to, to public arriving and to employees who are using machines, um, it, it is actually something that is rather discouraged um, by the health community and, and by myself. And the reason for that is that uh, we find that people who are wearing gloves are washing their hands less and untrained professionals, unless they're like a, you know, like a, um, you know, a paramedic or someone who's actually been trained, you know, on how to put on the gloves and how to take off the gloves without be can, becoming contaminated, it's actually a less safe scenario. So what we're encouraging folks to do is wash their hands more, use the hand sanitizer and, uh, and, and scrub uh, in that way. But because some folks will, f will be more comfortable if the gloves are on hand, you know, those, those are in place. Are there any questions of me or of this plan for myself or the town manager? Yeah, a lot of work went into it. Yeah, a lot of work went into it. <clears throat> Lee, are you good? Any questions? I guess just since it is so robust and long and, and overwhelming, you know, just like you presented it to us, was there any kind of training to help employees digest this to feel comfortable and ask questions? So that actually is a good question. So. Um, there has not yet been training, but there there will be training. So the tr the training will include, you know, what's expected of the you know of the of the mask, what's expected of the hand hand washing, and um, you know, it sounds like a simple thing. I remember going into the military, and it's like they show you how to brush your teeth, they show you how to wash your hands, they show you all those things. It may be simple, but you know, in the the war against this virus, this is really important stuff, and it, you know, it takes just a few people that maybe aren't washing their hands correctly or not at all, um, or maybe touching you know, near their mouth or nose, that they could get contaminated and they could bring it home to their families, to other employees, et cetera. That'll be part of the training. Um, additionally, there will be some, really a lot of it will be reminders, not so much uh, ex, you know, 
deep down training, but reminders of this is what's expected. This is, these are the procedures and protocols that you're expected to uh, adhere to when working in the municipal buildings. And you know, you know, folks, um, you know, we believe we'll be we'll be all right with that. Uh, we we I have asked for feedback on this plan. Anyone's input? This this plan was actually built not just by myself and Bill. It was actually from uh, from departments, from the department heads, uh, who also reached out to their staffs for what what do you need to be able to come back to work? What's what's going to be required, you're the one working in your station, you're the one that does your individual job, you're the only folks that put on the election or run, you know, town meeting or, or, or man the, you know, DPW building, you know, what, what is it? And we had a lot of that come back actually from the employees themselves. So they've actually been involved in training us on what they need. Now we'll turn around and take this uh, comprehensive plan and, and, you know, have that conversation with them. So yes, it's training, but I would call of it Call, call it uh, actually a, a two-way communication, but uh, good question, thank you. Yeah, because I see there's nowhere for them to sign it. So, you know, really we'd have no way of knowing who's received the plan, who's read the plan, who knows how to follow the plan. So just, you know, just a thought as we roll it out. And then, you know, Bill, I know you, we kind of wrapped two items into one, one being the um, COVID-19 restaurant stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we do have Thursday meeting posted and some of us have seen those draft regulations that have gone around, but I don't see them in board docs. So I wanna be sure that they're shared with the full group. I don't wanna steal Ron's thunder, but he said something kind of profound. I think an email, you know, that we need to do everything we can right now to, to help these businesses. Cause if a business doesn't succeed, you know, we won't, we probably won't see that, that filled for, for a while. So um, I just wanna make sure that people know that that meeting's happening Thursday, that everyone has those draft rules and regulations that you know, Paige has put so much time into and um, has had a chance to review them before then. Okay, we can do that. Yep, we'll do that, Leah. We'll make sure the board um, has those in board docs. Mr. Chairman, I just, if I could just say a couple things. Uh, first of all, I wanna say thank you to Mike and to all the department heads and employees who participated. This really was a bottom-up approach instead of a top-down one. Uh, because there is no playbook on this. And so we really learned a lot from the various departments as to what they needed and what they thought was, would provide them a safe environment. And all the way from the, from the truck drivers all the way through to the, you know, the people working the, at the desks and the, and, and the different in the libraries, et cetera. The libraries actually put a very good plan in place, uh, probably once one is being used by other, other departments um, and throughout the Commonwealth now. So it's a really good plan. Um, I think the, the DPW plan was excellent, really well done. Um, and, you know, I think our public safety folks go without saying is that they've done a terrific job. I think one that the, one of the, the plans that hasn't been mentioned as, as significantly, but is a really important plan is the one with the COA and human services, because that one, that's a plan that's going to require a significant uh, process to get the folks back in line, uh, into, in, online rather, to, uh, to, to get them back into the building. And that's going to have it's going to be a little ways away before we get there. But um, I have to, you know, hats off to to Mark Craig and his team for putting together programs that have been on ever since this whole COVID-19 program has uh, issue has occurred. He really has been done a great job of keeping the seniors involved at various different levels and communicating with them and talking with them in various various different ways. So thanks to him and, and everybody who's done such a great job of keeping us safe and. and you know, like I said, the public safety guys and, and gals have done a terrific job of keeping everybody safe on this end. But you know, I, I appreciate the work that's been put into this into this plan as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Sure. <clears throat> the other folks that deserve a, uh, a a thank you on this is uh, Pauline and and her staff at the Board of Health. Uh, we we went back to them and, and ran this by them. Does this make sense? Is this compliant with the you know with what's being put out? Uh, and Deputy Tom Kenton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the, and, the, and the folks over in public safety, they, they've really been a, a great asset in, in you know, keep, keeping us straight. Um, we also won't, you know, uh, Bill put together a, uh, a task force to, from the beginning, what are we doing week to week from, from week one? And this came, started there, um, and then, then we started looking, as, as, as Bill and this team here always does, what are other people doing? What are other towns doing? One of the best plans we saw came out of West Springfield. So we built off of that. 
and, and picked and chose from many other towns as well as companies and organizations. And we have what we think is the best plan out there, at least that we've seen. And uh, we think this may be a model for some other communities or many other communities um, to use to, to reopen their, their services safely. Thank you, Mike. Great job. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to um, just insert, since we're talking a lot about COVID, um, under new business, um, Dennis Norton had uh, sent in uh, last week something for me to read under citizens' input, and I'm just going to push that up uh, to, to talk about that for a few minutes now. Um, and, and I read that in total uh, two weeks ago, but generally I'll, I'll just re read the uh, heart of what he had to say. Uh, I am requesting that the board implement a requirement that people walking, jogging, or bicycling on roadways with a single sidewalk wear a mask because there is no other way that they can properly socially distance. Um, I had had a, a good conversation with uh, our, our Deputy uh, Fire Chief uh, Tom Kenvin, who was also a uh, public health nurse. And uh, so I have him on uh, uh, Zoomed in today uh, just to talk to see what the uh, board's thought on that would be and maybe uh, Tom's um, thought. Maybe we'll start with you, Tom, if you don't mind, and just uh, talk a little bit about what we talked about a little earlier. Sure, certainly. Um, well, thanks everybody for having me tonight. Um, so we spoke earlier um, with regards to wearing masks outside if you can't socially or I should say physically distance that six foot um, spacing. Um, and it is a challenge. Um, and ultimately through the governor's office, although we did mandate those masks um, in the outside space, it's very difficult to, number one, have them on you, number two, wear them. Um, and then you the defining, you know, you kind of redefine the, the barriers in terms of, you know, proximity as people are running by you or jogging or exercising. So it, it does become, um, it can be very frustrating for some, especially if you're, uh, you know, a strict rule follow and you really care about the message that's being put out there right now. Um, so um, Dr. Hoffman and I spoke briefly on uh, the masks um, with regards to specifically people running by, maybe some folks who are a little bit older that wouldn't be able to step off the curb or if doing so is unsafe um, to create that six foot physical distance. Um, and I think really what it comes down to is, you know, really focusing on what we can do at the individual level. Um, we all know that, you know, uh, if, if we're gonna adopt a healthy behavior, um, we have to believe in it, we have to see, you know, effects from it. Mm -hmm. So I think as we start to come out of um, the quarantine isolating phase and start to move into the opening phase, I think we have a great opportunity for everyone to be re reintroduced to some of the things we need to do to slow and stop the spread of COVID-19 and particularly keep people healthy, uh, especially in the community where we work, play and live. Um, so I think that goes to the individual, uh, being conscientious and thoughtful of the person around them. Uh, if you see an only couple walking down the street um, and you have the ability to, to move around them, then you should do so. Um, I think when it goes to anything beyond that, I think it's really, um, it's up to the individual to, to really focus on doing what's, what's needed to protect those around them. Um, any thoughts from um, any board members? No, I think it's just, it's just common courtesy. If, if you're out and about, have a mask. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're walking and you, don't think you can socially distance, put your mask on. If it's questionable, put your mask on. If you're sure and you can safely socially distance, you don't have to put your mask on. I know, for one, it's very difficult to run with a mask on or ride a bike with a mask on. Um, and, and also, I might add, um, very unhealthy. Yep. Um, you know, when you're exercising up at a different level, um, breathing that carbon monoxide back into your system could, could certainly cause a very real uh, issue called hypoxia, where um, you know the brain, the body isn't getting the oxygen it, it, it needs for that excess um, uh, uh, strenuous exercise. So um, it is important, I, I, I think, to, to be courteous. Unfortunately, we can't regulate courteous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if someone's not courteous to a senior citizen couple walking down the street with their masks on, you know, I, I don't think. You know that 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 shame on their parents for not uh, teaching them what what right and wrong is, um, but I I think regulating everybody to wear a mask uh, is also the wrong the wrong route to go, uh, especially when when someone's exercising at a higher level. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree with you guys. <clears throat> Al, Leah, any thoughts? Sorry, I pick on you, but it's just because I want to make sure you you get a chance to say. 
coming in Zoom. No, I appreciate it. I don't think I could have said it better than you just put it, Doc. That was that was perfect. I completely agree. Yeah, I mean, we, we all see, I, I, I walk to, um, and I walk down Granite and Prospect and Water Street, um, Granite not having sidewalks on either side. Um, but there have been times where I've gone on the other side when I've seen people with masks, and there are times the people coming towards me go to the other side. Um, that's just the nature of, of, of where we are in, in society today. Um, so, um, you know, I, I wouldn't like to see any further regulation, but I would love to see a lot more courteous people out there, uh, uh, especially uh, when you're around uh, senior citizens that, that are a lot more concerned than we are, uh, a lot more concerned than some others might be. Great. Good. Tom, any other thoughts or are you good? I'm good, thank you very much. All right, thank you for uh, uh, weighing in on this uh, matter too, Tom, and taking a few minutes out of your family time to zoom in. Absolutely, happy to help, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, um, next on the agenda, I see a few planning board members have zoomed in. Uh, we have a co-joint meeting uh, with the planning board um, on appointing a, a social planning board member. Uh, do you gentlemen have to, oh, sorry. <laughs> you <laughs> members need to um, sign in or uh, put yourselves into a meeting? Yes, we can We can do that. You know, just a uh, planning board meeting and joint session with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, we'll come to order, please. All right. So, um, Kevin, you're up. Yeah, the the the, um, the purpose of the meeting with with the board is one that we've had before in uh, previous times when we need to um, appoint an associate member. Um, town meeting many years ago made this a regulation that we had to jointly appoint um, any new associate member. The member in question uh, this year is John Rhodes. He has for many years been a full time member but decided not to run for a full-time position this year. Jeff Peterson is running for that position. Just to give um, both of our boards just a, a, a little reminder, John was originally appointed an associate member of the board in 2009 when Peter St. Laurent chose not to run for re-election and the alternate who was Gordon Green at the time um, became a full-time member. In 2013, um, another board member, Shannon McLaughlin, resigned when she moved out of town, and associate member John Rhodes was appointed to fill the seat until the next town election where he ran and, and won. In 2015, Vice Chairman Bill Greeter retired in December, and member John Rhodes was voted as vice chairman. And in 2019, John Rhodes stepped down as vice chair and became clerk. Ron Bressy has taken his position as the vice chair. And this year, Don, John decided not to run for re-election. He has graciously offered to stay on as the associate member because we do have a number of open um, uh, hearings that have already started um, uh, that he has sat in on. And um, it would be important to have an associate there in case any full-time member was unable to uh, attend a meeting and uh, thereby give uh, the applicant um, a full slate to uh, to vote fairly on whatever the proposal might be. And because he has so much experience and was gracious enough to ask, uh, we brought it before your board to see if you would uh, kindly concur with us and uh, appoint him again as an associate member. Great, thank you. Uh, any thoughts from our board? Uh, I've known John for years going way back when uh, his children were playing soccer with my children. Uh, he's a very qualified individual, and I think he remaining on the planning board would be a valuable asset for the community. Awesome. Yeah, I agree. I mean, just his um, his knowledge of, of that world and, and his past knowledge of being on the board and being at all these meetings, I think it makes great sense. So I'll, uh, I guess we'll uh, move to accept. Do you have a motion? Uh, a motion to appoint John Rhodes as an associate member of the planning board with his term expiring on May 1st, 2021. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. 
Great. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys Thursday. Okay, see you then. Okay. Thank you for uh, uh, having us on tonight. All right. Good night, everyone. Oh, <laughs> cleaning board, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we, we still have a Just little a time board, to yeah. go. Um, yeah. All right, that worked well. So um, we're going to discuss a little bit about approve the um, Board of Selectmen meeting schedule. Um, Christina and I went over the schedule, made sure uh, there weren't any uh, conflicts, double-checked with the uh, Jewish holidays. Uh, the only thing um, we decided to bring to the board is um, one of our meetings is three days before Christmas, potentially the 22nd, and just wanted to check with the board to see if they wanted to keep that or move it to the week before and have two meetings, um, one right after another. Well, I was looking at that too. I, I think if we did two meetings back to back in November, November 10th and 17th, I don't know what other holidays are there, but um, that would free us up for the Thanksgiving week and the Christmas week. Hmm. It appears anyways. So we would do the 10th of November which I think we're already scheduled for, and then we just do one the 17th, and then that kicks us out the extra week, and that puts us at December 1st and December 15th. So I don't know how that affects any of the other holidays, though. So then would you stick with January uh, 5th and 19th, the schedule that's already there? Yeah. Okay. Just for consideration. It's, actually, it's a good thought. So say it again, uh, Chris, I'm so sorry, we, now that I have it in front of me. November 10th, we're yeah. already scheduled. So right. if we did November 10th and November 17th, yep. so back-to-back -back meetings, virtually a week apart, that would kick us out. Another two weeks would be December 1st. Oh, I see so what you're have, saying. Yeah. The, the one that's scheduled in November is also, I believe, the week of Thanksgiving. That's right. That's so that's a... Yeah, this would be a, we push it a week so, before Thanksgiving. So, so double Saturday. up in November. Double and then up just, in November, uh, and then that takes care of Thanksgiving, yeah. and then it'll take care of Christmas week too. Okay. Did you, Did you understand that, Leah? I did, and you know, my only thought was normally when we when we do this, we have the new board in place. I don't think any of these dates are really controversial, so whoever joins us just won't you know have this discussion that they normally would have the ability to when we decide this as a group. Um, but I, I like Chris's suggestion. I think that that works well. Yeah. So we won't let David vote on it. <laughs> Fine by me. <laughs> so we would keep the January 5th meeting, so that would be have three weeks between our January, yes. uh, December 15th and our January 5th right. meeting. Actually, that works so, out well, actually, if you do it that way. Yeah. So should, should you get it all, though? Christina, okay. 10th, 17th, and then the 1st and the 15th. Yeah, that, that's a great idea. Any further discussion? All right. All right. Um, I make a motion to accept the fiscal year 21 Board of Selectmen meeting schedule as amended. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I'm not voting. <laughs> One abstaining. <Stating>. Abstention. <laughs> One abstention. All right. Great. All right. All right. Uh, okay, uh, we're going to. Uh, um, over the last couple of weeks, we got um, a survey sent out to all five of us. Um, uh, that was the uh, town manager's annual evaluation. Um, Mike's going to talk a little bit about the process, uh, and then I'll talk uh, about the results. Okay, so this evaluation period is April 18th, 2019 to April 17th, 2020. So back in April, I sent a, um, a self-evaluation form to uh, the town manager, uh, which he filled out, returned to, um, to me. And then I, I sent blank evaluations and, um, and that self-survey or self-evaluation um, out to the board um, at your last, around the time of your last meeting. And then at the last meeting, it was discussed that, um, that uh, those uh, evaluations would come in last Tuesday, and then you discuss them this uh, tonight. 
Uh, so in between that time, since they all came in, uh, the chairman and I have met uh, three times, and we both got copies of all the evaluations. We went through them, we looked at the numbers, um, and then um, as in last year, we, we went and, and looked at, read all the comments and looked at, okay, the, the, the spectrum um, from, from the, the um, critical ones to the, to the really, you know, brilliant, you know, does terrific ones and everything in between. And we, um, we worked really hard to come up with what is a fair summary of these five, uh, five evaluations uh, that we can put together and present to the board. And uh, the areas of evaluation, there are eight areas, and they are leadership and staff effectiveness. Number two is planning and organizing. Number three is communication and community relations. Number four is problem solving, innovation, and decision making. Five is budget and financial management. Six is customer service and service quality. Number seven is personal, professional, and organizational integrity. Number eight is cross-departmental and organizational management. And then there are two other areas um, that, that both the, the town manager filled as well as the five board of selectmen members filled. And the first one is prior year accomplishments, where any number of, of uh, things could be put in there. And then the, the last area was objectives for the year. Again, unlimited uh, room for, uh, for board members to put in objectives for the, for the future year. So that's the process that brought us to uh, this evening. And I will pass out the summary evaluations and then uh, the chairman will walk through um, you know, what the results were. Any, any like, questions on the process? Docs? I don't see it. What's that? Oh, we didn't think is about this? that. Is this in board docs? Um, no. Let me see if I can. Can you email it to her? You're gonna, read it. You're gonna I... read it anyways, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna read them. Okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna read it, if there's nothing yeah, no, I have I'll, to say. Uh, uh, sorry about that. We we thought we'd hand them out and forgot that you'd be zooming. See if you can email her while we're yeah, going we're over them. One. I'm gonna email this to you right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, um, Mike, as Mike mentioned, we um, spent a few days and, and, and went over all of these, tabulated uh, the point score uh, out of a possible four. Uh, overall, um, our, our town manager, Bill Keegan, got a score of 3.5. Um, under category one, uh, leadership, staff effectiveness, um, we pulled out in, in, in no particular order um, some of the highlights of, of we felt, and I, I know a lot of us felt that as much as the scores were, the comments uh, are, are even more important um, of, it, uh, of, of actually um, how Bill did uh, and where he could uh, use some improvement um, going forward. So on the leadership and, and staff effectiveness, um, one comment was uh, Bill continues to set an example of leadership. He holds people accountable, but ho holds himself accountable as well. Uh, another comment, Bill's leadership has done the town well over the last several years and has really been invaluable this past year. And then a third one we picked up out uh, provides training of top personnel to work as a cohesive group uh, across various uh, disciplines. And these were uh, from, from all the comments from all five uh, the board of directors, uh, board of selectmen. Under uh, planning and organizing, um, one comment, I think we do a good job coming up with ideas, uh, but sometimes uh, they feel that we could do a better job implementing and follow through on them. Uh, another uh, comment, uh, Bill does a very good job of creating workflow assignments uh, to eliminate dual responsibilities and overlap. Peers, peers the right people on a team to accomplish whatever task is in front of them. And then another compact, uh, comment, uh, process, process of promotions and hires led to a select people with excellent skills that will enhance le leadership uh, for the town's future. Under communication, um, 
Bill has always done a good job of keeping the board informed. Uh, and another and, and big improvement over last year uh, and the overall communication to the community. Uh, we've seen that certainly with the COVID-19 uh, and, and, and other issues this over the past year. Uh, fourth category, problem solving, innovation and decision making. Uh, one comment was he continually reaches out to peers, officials and organizations looking for different ways to do things uh, and sometimes maybe even out of the box. Uh, Another comment, good problem solving and decision making skills, but not unilaterally. He asks for input from anyone who can contribute. And uh, last, uh, Bill never shies away from tackling um, them, the problems and decisions head on. Uh, and then, I'm sorry, one more, you make sound decisions on a wide variety of issues with positive outcomes. Uh, budget and financial management. Uh, one person wrote, I think this category, uh, he needed the most improvement. Uh, I believe in the beginning he relied on uh, an old uh, um, finance director, Randy Scollins, but working with him on this budget and the COVID-19 cycle and, and all the changes we've made to the budget, um, I, believe he can, uh, 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 I believe he can totally discuss the budget with anyone. Uh, item six, uh, custom service. Uh, um, and service quality. Uh, I do think Bill can push the staff to follow through consistently on excellent customer service practices. Another comment, he is very good at diffusing a situation and brings a calm demeanor to the job. Uh, third comment, Bill has instituted a customer service policy that has taken some time to train staff. However, it, customer service, has been much improved over the past years. Uh, seven, personal, uh, personal, professional, and organizational uh, integrity. Um, uh, it, it, we picked out one, but, but all five were pretty much the same. Bill has always been a gentleman and a true professional. Um, and eight, cross-departmental organizational management. Uh, great job this year in, in uh, departmental collaboration. Another comment. Bill has regular department head meetings where they share ideas and identify best practices on an ongoing basis. And last, it is, uh, it is noticeable that you have forged a st strong working relationship with the school leadership and work closely with them, uh, which I think is, uh, which, which a lot of us think is very important, um, having a good relationship with the um, school department. Um, a list of, um, Compilation list of prior year's accomplishment. You know, high on that list is uh, the AAA bond rating reapproval. Uh, Bill also, in this past year, hired a new police chief, a new finance director, a new DPW director, and director of accounting. Um, you know, four huge uh, leadership positions. And if you throw in uh, a few months before that, the um, uh, fire chief, you know, five. Uh, he also started uh, the SEMREC, uh, the regional dispatch, uh, having moved uh, Mansfield and Foxborough online in Foxborough. Uh, he encourages the staff to take various leadership courses. Uh, the budget process this year uh, was well thought out and discussions were proactive. Bill, does, Bill did such a great job keeping the ship on course without a finance director for a while. Uh, culture improvement in town hall and leadership during the pandemic. And we picked out four things uh, that are objectives for the coming year. Um, uh, SEMREC, um, all four towns uh, up on, what's it called? Tower Hill? Yeah, uh, uh, High Rock. High Rock Hill. High Rock, High Rock Hill, Hill. Uh, which should be close to like August. We should see that by August or September this year. Yeah, uh, guiding town through the COVID-19 and all aspects of running the town. Uh, given the COVID-19 crisis, future budgets must be scaled to show loss in revenue in the various departments, uh, may not be able to fill vacancies, and maybe more part-time workers used. Uh, and last comment, I'd like to see Bill take a more proactive role in setting measurable goals in 2020. Uh, so that was uh, Bill's valuation. I, uh, any comments from um, the Board of Selectmen? You know, we pretty much discussed it. Um, I think overall it was a great, um, great review, and uh, keep up the good work.
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate the the kind words and the uh, and the and the great scores. I, um, I obviously this is um, this was an interesting year for so many so many different ways and uh, so many different changes that took place in the past year, and then to be hit with COVID nineteen at the end of it made it a very interesting year in so many different ways. So I appreciate all the support that I get from this members of this board. Um, it, it's great working with all of you and uh, and, and with Mike and the, and the staff. They do a tremendous job and. They've always been very supportive throughout this whole process, and and also throughout the year, and and you know all the department heads, the, the employees, who do such a great job in this community. It makes my job a lot easier than than most people have as a job. So I, I appreciate that significantly. Um, I think you know when we talk about goal setting up in the upcoming year, um, I like to do a lot more proactive discussion with this board to try and set those goals. Um, and uh, we even Mike and I talked about this today that. Maybe we even try to put something on the agenda for the next meeting. Uh, we will be a new board at that time, you know. So, uh, uh, and I, I just think it's probably the best time in the world to try and set that forward. To get, let's try and work on something that we can all agree on. Um, you know, you know, certainly help with that process because um, I think it's important. It's easier for me to understand what's important to you. And um, this job is is a response is is responsive to the needs of the community, and you and you're the ones who set that agenda, not me. So I think it's really important that we all agree on what that is and what's important to, as we go forward. And last but not least, I want to say thanks to Dave, who's been a tremendous, uh, uh, tremendous member of the board. Uh, did a lot during his six years. Um, uh, times I'm sure there were there were some really good times and some not so good times, but uh, but he all throughout the entire time did a terrific job, and I'm really grateful for his support and, um, and all the things he's done for this community. So thank you. Mr. Chairman, does it make sense uh, to put, as Bill mentioned, the proactive goal setting as an action item or at least a discussion item on the next meeting and then possibly set or discuss whether you want to set a separate meeting uh, for the board to sit down with Bill and, and set those goals? We could put it on the selectman's new business uh, for a discussion. Yeah. 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 And one of the things I talked to Mike about, and I know this has come up every year for the last two or three years, is um, kind of tweaking this evaluation for next year. Um, the categories themselves are fine, but some of the, you know, some of the selections I don't think are overly applicable, um, or we wouldn't really know, um, you know, a lot of it. So uh, I would. I kind of talked to Mike the other day about just looking at how to, I don't want to totally throw this one out, but I want to just see if there's a way that we can tweak it a little bit to make it. Talk about the uh, online that you're hoping to do next year. Yeah, we are hoping, uh, you know, come, come July to do an online version, but that'll still be dependent on us getting um, a tool like this to the right. vendor. And, and Leah has, has raised the same questions that, um, that, that Chris has. And, um, and they're perfectly valid. Uh, so what I'll do between um, either now and your next meeting or, or, or now and when you get together to do the goal setting, um, provide maybe a, a, a sample of something to consider. Um, you know, this, this instrument with some modifications to it and highlight what those modifications might be. And then you give me some feedback and then we can work on a tool. And then, the, you know, between the board and the town manager, agree to a, an appropriate tool, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. I'm, like, I'm thinking like minor tweaks, not a major overhaul. I don't know what Lee is thinking, but. Um. I think, Leah, you said the same thing too, didn't you? That there were some minor tweaks that you'd like to see. To the evaluation yeah, there, there were some like chris said that that just plain kind of didn't make as much sense um so i think maybe that conversation can happen in tandem with the goal setting conversation you know because someone at like bill's executive level um you know some of the things that we were looking at were kind of granular and i think we need to you know someone at that level we need to kind of look at look look at different things um so i do think that the goal setting process should be not us just kind of feeding the goals to you, Bill, but a conversation. I think you know, come to us with some draft goals. Let's let's look at them, tweak them, talk about them, and um, I think we should just make sure we do that early in the year. And you know, I think the online tool is not only for Bill's evaluation, but for the whole town. 
So, you know, picture all these evaluations are sitting out in drawers. Um, I really think it's important for the town to get back on an online tool like we were before for this particular review and all reviews. Okay. Uh, so my, my thought would, would it hold on to the evaluations and maybe if you want to write some notes uh, on how you would change some things and give them back to uh, Mike. Yeah. Uh, like a couple of things you and Leah were talking yeah. about, just some tweaks. Um, then Mike will process that and uh, come back to us. So yeah, we'll do, uh, we'll do that under a new business uh, for a discussion. Along the lines with that, Mr. Chairman, in, in, um, in response to some of the comments, I think those are, are things that are relatively easy to fix. But in terms of actually setting goals, what I'd like to see the board do is become more strategic. In other words, looking at the, the big picture, for instance, you know, three years from now, you're going to have a new town manager. So it's time to start thinking about that process now. And what is that, what is that person going to, going to what you going to, what's your expectation going to be for that person in three years? And even if, uh, if you, you don't want to wait till the last year to have that conversation, you want to start building that momentum towards that change. And, um, and then, you know, what are the goals, the long-term goals for the town? I mean, start looking at, you know, how we can prepare for this next, next epi uh, pandemic. What are the steps we could have done better? In this one, um, and, and look at, you know, uh, looking at our, our economic development, you know, strategic moves. You know, working more closely with the with the building community and the, and the and the and also preparing, making sure that the town is financial continues to be financially set, for the long term and not just the short term. So I, I think that, a lot of those steps need, need require some discussion, but also direction, and what are the things you think are important. And you know why we how we can work together to try and make that happen, and uh, for the good of the community. Bill and I had a discussion earlier uh, today about when I had brought up you know you're going to want to do goal setting with the board, um, and and he just started rattling off some things, and I, you know some of them may not even come back to him right away, but I, mm -hmm. I filled a page, and and they were all strategic things. And so I'm going to bring that back to that uh, meeting so that if it's stuff you don't come up with or he doesn't remember that he rattled off so quickly, um, I'll put it because it was, it was really, really good strategic long-term stuff for the, for the town. Things, you know, it struck me as we've come a long way in our dialogue with, you know, with the different major boards in getting to where we are in a, in a couple of really diff difficult, especially this year, budget years. And you know, when we think of uh, Bill and I talked about this, you know, what about between like, you know, housing and and the selectmen, you know, uh, you know, with sometimes I, I don't know if there's and, and other boards. It's just as we bring that dialogue, uh, those are strategic things that are all going to building those relationships, like was mentioned in the in the summary. Uh, oh, 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 Bill and, and you know, so had a great working relationship with the school. That doesn't happen by accident. Those conversations happen, and then when it comes crunch time, when you're short on money, you actually know the person you're sitting with the table with. And so he talked about a lot of those things like that, and those are great strategic things that uh, I'm sure he'll rattle them off again. But if not, I got them on got paper. Him. Yeah, right. So, 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 but it's just a, it's a start of a conversation. I think we we work with a white pad and we start putting throwing some ideas out, and then. And then, then you, I've got something to work with and come back to you with a plan that, 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 you, that you can all sign off on. Great. All right. Thank so, you. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Mike. Tom, Assistant Town Manager's update. Um, I, I think that was my update. Between the plan <laughs> and the evaluation, um, I, I'm exhausted. Well, you did a lot of talking today. <laughs> um, but, but now it's time for actually, I guess my update is the, the plan implementation. And, uh, and Leah's right with her question, the, the training on the plan, the implementation of the plan. You know, uh, we, today, as opposed to last week, we've got four more employees in the building. You know, DPW, you know, they were split shifts um, with, you know, a, a lot of their administrative staff working remotely. They've, they're bringing them all back. So now it's going to be, you know, getting around town and, and find out where the rough spots are. What do we need to do to get things going again? Because when you think about, you know, if you're an athlete and you take two months off without training, um, even though we've been doing our stuff, it's like you've been riding the exercise bike and not actually hitting the road. So now we're hitting the road again and preparing to get the public back in here and provide full services. So I guess that's my update is now it's time to implement that plan and where 
where folks saw, whether it's board members, employees, department heads, uh, whatever, that, wait a minute, that didn't make sense. Feed that back, because we've, we've, this is a living document. We want to make, it, make sure it works for us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, just to follow up with Mike just said, I think it's also important that we take time to take a step back from what we've learned from this experience as well. You know, what do we do well, what, do we, what, you know, what we could have done better, but also are there things that we can do business differently going forward in, in, different, in a different format? Uh, I think we're all, this is a learning moment right now, and I think we should take advantage of that. So I think that that's, part, that's one of the phases that we should incorporate into the plan is what have we learned, what worked well, what didn't work well, uh, and how can we continue to do things better into the future? And, um, you know, the one thing that, that we've all learned is that, you know, you know, is that remote work isn't such a bad thing, but, it, but the other side of it is that there are certain things you can't do remotely. And so, we, so we, 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 then we can actually identify those things and continue to work um, in, the best, in a way that's most efficient uh, going forward. So um, my report was more to, to congratulate Ali Rodriguez and, and, and Mike Weber, who did a, a fabulous job with the putting together Memorial Day service yesterday uh, that, was, uh, that was held uh, in a virtual format for the first time, I think, ever. Um, this town prides itself significantly on honoring its, its veterans, uh, especially those who have who've lost their lives and given the ultimate sacrifice in doing so. And, uh, we just uh, always want to remember that. We never want to forget uh, the, the, the tributes that they've, and, and continue to pay tribute to them for as long as, as this community exists. We should always, we should always remember that. And, and it does, and, and I thought Allie did a really nice job of, of incorporating as many good things as she could into that, even though it was abbreviated ceremony and it was done virtually. I thought it was really well done, and I, I appreciate the work that Mike put into that, Mike Weber, and, I think Christina helped out with a little bit of that as well, so I appreciate her help in that as well. And uh, and, and uh, Ali did a nice job taking the lead on that. And then uh, the other things we're working on is that we're getting ready for town meeting. Um, the, don't forget the elections are coming up on, on June 8th. Um, a lot of people are, vo are, are actually voting remotely uh, for or through absentee ballot, so if people still want to do that, they can do that. I think a lot of people are using that option as, as uh, this year, given the circumstances. And then also, town meeting is still planned for the 15th of, of June. We still have yet to receive clear guidance as to what, what, how we can do that, but I think uh, at this point in time, um, it, we, we do think we can set up the room in a, socially, in, a, in a safe, socially distanced way to protect everyone who participates in the meeting, and hopefully that will uh, be able to take place on the 15th at this point. At this point. So that's the plan. We're still we're still working off that plan, and we'll hope that we'll do that. Now, just uh, just a, a couple other COVID-19 related uh, pieces of information. Um, we are at, at this point applying for federal aid uh, to use the federal aid that's been given to us already. We, we, I think Massachusetts received 507 million dollars of federal aid through the code, through the CARES Act. We're applying uh, for the, for the use of those funds uh, for expenses that we've incurred throughout uh, the past several months. Uh, we're documenting all that. We're working closely with all the various departments, including the school department, to actually submit for that funding so we can actually utilize those funds. Foxborough received about $1.5 million of, 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 of potential, uh, of, of um, uh, aid potential. Um, and so we need to actually come up with, with the amount of money that, uh, that can be used, of money uses that can be used for that money. Um, we're in the process of doing that. We hope to be able to submit by next week. Um, all the things that we think are eligible for funding under the program. Now, on top of that, I just uh, read today that uh, um, Senate President uh, Mitch McConnell indicated that, that he is supportive of, of looking at an, an, uh, some additional federal aid, another federal aid package. The, the House uh, submitted its plan, a $3 trillion plan, that was, uh, that was uh, essentially uh, rejected by the Senate though they know that they need to do something, and so obviously the negotiation has begun as to what that plan will look like. And I noticed that even the president has come out and said that he would, he would support an additional uh, federal aid plan. What was interesting to, to me today was to see that, um, that uh, the Senate president indicated that he, was, he is, is actually supportive of, of, of aid to, to cities and towns, including replacement of revenue that has been lost as a result of COVID-19. So that, that was a step in the right direction, which I was, I was pleased to see that being said at that level. So 
if that is in fact the case, I know that the House will support that. It's good to see that the Senate President is actually uh, considering that as part of his plan as well. So let's see what happens, but I'm actually optimistic that we may actually get some, some additional aid, uh, be eligible for aid that could help us uh, going into next year. Our budget is balanced. Uh, we actually have come up with a plan that virtually all uh, major policy boards have signed off on. School committee, the board, this board of selectmen, and also the, uh, the advisory committee voted unanimously to support the plan that we've all worked on together. So we, so we actually are in a good position going into town meeting that everybody's in the same place um, going into a budget plan for next year. Um, and even though we know that we'll probably have to revisit that plan again in the fall, given the, the lesser love of uncertainty with state aid and other uh, pieces of that document that are missing. So lots of work that's being done right now, getting ready, to, putting together the motions for town meeting, getting, uh, trying to finalize all the pieces that have to be done still before we get to that point. That's my plan. That's my uh, my presentation. My uh, report for tonight. Great, thank you. Uh, under selectmen's update, mm -hmm. um, new business uh, annual town meeting annual town report update. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I'm still waiting on a couple of because of COVID nineteen, people have gotten sidetracked and not been able to get back to me. But um, my goal is to have it sent to the printers by tomorrow morning, and an online version will be made available later this week or early next week, um, and it will be printed and ready for a town meeting. Right. And they're distributed at town meeting for the first time? Yes. Right. Always. Okay. Thank you. It's Steve. usually a town election, isn't it? No, well, town meeting. Yeah, I think it is town meeting, if I'm not mistaken. The requirement is it has to be available before town meeting or at yeah. town meeting, but okay. I'm not sure. The yeah, time I think ready. it used to be always ready ahead of time at the town election the week before. But no we'll be close. Yeah. We'll be close. Yeah. Um, Question, did the technology department get in there with everything going on with COVID-19? Bill and I talked about how important it was, and I noticed they're kind of the only department omitted. Were we able to add them? Uh, no, because of everything, we thought that um, we would do it for next year. Um, they would have a be they are they just aren't currently available right to, now. To, to, to <laughs> yes. That was the challenge, yeah. getting, their, getting their information pulled together. Okay, I just don't want to lose sight of it for next year. No, uh, it's, on, it's, it's a, on my list. It's definitely a good suggestion, Leah, just that just wasn't wasn't practically able to do get it done this year unfortunately uh on the old business committee uh compliance update so bill you want to talk about that a little bit uh just the um sure how it came up and so it looks like the, there is some um some language uh in in the bylaws that, that make it a little bit um uh, that, that can a person can easily raise questions about how that works but we did uh, evaluate the language um, and it, it looks it appears that everybody is in compliance but there are a couple people a couple there is at least one board uh, that is actually down a few positions right now and that's the EDC um, we've received applications for two individual two individuals have applied for that position and so and if anybody else wants to they certainly can do that uh, the process is the normal process is to send those applications to the various uh, committees that that uh, that that have the openings let them review the applicants and then uh, make a recommendation back to the board for consideration the board ultimately has it says the authority to appoint because it is your appointment but um, but they uh, the board has often in many years relied on a recommendation of the committee before they make that decision um, so, they, but there was a question as to whether or not uh, there was a compliance issue with, with whether your person could a person on a committee could serve more than one term, and in fact, that is in fact that is in fact the case. They can serve more than one term on the committee. So uh, that has been uh, that has been addressed. Uh, it would be appropriate, though, at some point to look at some of the language and how that is written because it is confusing, and I can see how one could be. Um, led to believe that that is in fact uh, different from what what the intention was and the reason why we checked on the intention was because the individual who wrote the, the language was clearly indicated that that was the intention was to actually have a person serve for more than one term all right so um, so those, that's for board like appointed boards right that's correct okay. for appointed boards well maybe I can chime in here because this came in through me and it actually came in through a citizen so, um, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Um, so it is the Child Sexual Abuse Awareness Committee. Um, that mm -hmm. one, when we were looking at the boards and committees, actually wasn't really on my radar um, for one, like the EDC, like Bill talked about. 
but a citizen actually sent me an email start our, on our agenda and brought it up to me. And when I went and looked at it, it, it looks pretty, you know, it's in board docs for you guys to read and it's highlighted. Um, but the piece in question is that it looks like someone can serve a term, but then they have to take a break before they can come back. So um, the, the person that sent this to me went as far as sending me the code. They sent me the meeting minutes from that annual town meeting. Um, and, you know, when I look at it black and white, I interpret it the same way. So I was curious if town council had looked at it because, you know, there's one thing that's the spirit of what was kind of meant and then what is said in the code. And I think until, um, you know, we amend something, we do have to look at what is in the code. So I was curious if we had town council look at that or just the chair with their interpretation. No, that was not the chair's interpretation. That was, I read, read the uh, language and also have seen, I've, I've read these things on multiple occasions and the intention was not that the person would necessarily take a break, uh, but the person actually could then be eligible to, for, for further consideration. That language is awkward, I will admit to you. Uh, you know, I, I've said this on a couple occasions now. The language is awkward, but that was not the intent. Uh, in talking to, I think Mike actually verified that with, um, with the person who actually wrote that language, that uh, that, that was not the intent. Uh, to I mean, I just read it yeah. into the record because I want everyone that's, yeah. that's on the board to just kind of see what it says. Yeah. And it's the second sure. highlighted piece. It says, any member may be reappointed after one term has elapsed since the expiration of his or her most recent term. So again, going back to kind of intent versus what's written, um, you know, I don't want any committees to do extra work, but clearly when this was written, that that, that is a sentence in its own in this particular uh, it's chapter 13 of the code adopted at the may 12th 2014 meeting um so, so what so what so that I means would, if the person has has their term has elapsed that means that they can then be they can then be up for reconsideration for a reappointment so has it, town council just looked at it just to be sure we can we can certainly do that um and i'm happy to I'm happy to do that for you if you want but that's the inter general interpretation of that, but you know, certainly, if, if that is um, your, your desire, I'm certainly have, have to have town council look at it. Well, what's the rest of the board's you know thought? I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to drive it off the rails if if it's only me that's interpreting it that way. But when I look at what's highlighted and what the citizens sent over in the meeting minutes from town meeting, um, that that was the piece that they they brought up to me. So I just want to make sure we have a thorough, you know, discussion about it. Well, my my interpretation is I, I read it the same way Bill read it. Mm -hmm. um, I see what you're saying, but I, I still interpret it that they can run again. Yeah. The, the reason I say that it, it's not likely to be that case, look, and, and you know, I, I'll stand corrected if, it's, if it is different, but the reason I say it is because it's difficult enough to get people to even serve on committees. I can't imagine that there was ever the intent to, to not... To, to scout or, or have a person removed after the first term, especially if they've just learned how to do the job. It just it defies logic in many ways to, to, to write it that way. Well, my thought was kind of the opposite, that you know this is such an important committee that they wanted fresh thoughts and fresh energy, mm -hmm. possibly. You know, that's that was kind of where, where I went. Well, yeah. the biggest thing, I mean, mm -hmm. it was approved as written at town meeting. So we need to determine because you could look at it, yeah, yep. Leah's side, I can see it, and your side, I can see it. So, um, so we'll send have, we'll, it to town council. We'll send it to town council, we'll have <laughs> town council look at it, and yeah. we'll weigh in on it. That's fine. I mean, I, I'm happy to do that. Not a problem. Okay. Just to be safe, I appreciate yep. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, board and uh, committee appointment updates. Uh, we've sort of talked about that a, a little bit already. <laughs> Um, I'm still waiting on uh, people to email me back if they have openings on their committee. Like Bill said, EDC does have two uh, open positions, and there have been some applications. If Again, if you want to submit that, you can um, obviously submit that to the board. Um, and um, once I have that, I'll have a complete list of people who will be reappointed or who are seeking reappointment for the June 9th meeting. Okay. Great. Um, so not to chime in again, but I have some other comments, too. I don't know if you guys have that list up. It's the Excel document, copy of 2020 appointments. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I mean, I think we need to do more than go out and ask people if there are 
um, vacancies. And, you know, Christina, this is no fault of anyone. There's been a lot of turnover. And I don't think that we had a good list to start with. But when I looked at this list without doing any research, I can see like the advisory, the AdCom person being reappointed to the CIP committee, who's no longer on AdCom. Mm -hmm. I see retired police officers on the list to be appointed to, um, you know, liquor control agents. I see people who have been gone from boards for one, two, three, four years um, on lists for reappointment. Um, I probably have 10 different items or questions just without even kind of going out there. Like I know from talking to someone on the playing fields committee, um, one of my friends is, is taking a spot for someone who's stepping down. So um, I think that this list is a good start, but there's a lot of inaccuracies on it. Um, that's more about verifying the full list versus um, who has vacancies. And with the EDC, I, they did have an agenda item. I actually talked to Paige about this to kind of talk about the EDC. I think that the spirit of that when it started was a little bit Route 1 focused. And now, um, you know, with Forbes Crossing and Uptown, maybe looking at, you know, the member makeup of that, maybe a realtor, a business owner Uptown or someone from Forbes Crossing. Um, I think I would like to discuss that board more um, in particular, the makeup, and, and that's really for us to do, you know, maybe along with them. But this this list has a lot of, of issues like Scott Austin being reappointed, for example. Um, if you would send me those changes, Lee, I would appreciate that. Um, I did get that list from the town clerk's office, and I think that some of the um, information in the, the database that we have needs to obviously be updated, and I'm working with them in doing that. Unfortunately, with everything going on, it just uh, got pushed to the back burner, but it is something that we're working on to make sure that the next year and the upcoming boards and committees appointments for the next upcoming year will be much easier uh, in everything that we do for it. Yeah, so, I mean, I hope, don't think I'm being nitpicky. This town's built on the back of the volunteers. And, you know, I think that these boards and committees are very important and they make some really important decisions. And it's our job as the Board of Selectmen to make sure that, you know, we're looking at these and it, it just needs some um, housekeeping that I don't think has been done in a little while. And again, through, you know, um, no fault of anyone, but I also think that we need to tag departments to each um, committee. So we talked about that when we met kind of pre-pandemic, pre-pandemic, Christina, me, you and Bill, mm -hmm. you know, almost like liaisons or champions for these. So, you know, some of them are really obvious, like planning department and town manager's office, but there's other boards and committees that don't meet as often that, um, you know, we need someone to help them because again, they are volunteers. And I think that it's our job in town hall to kind of help them stay in compliance. Um, rather than kind of have everyone have to do it themselves. So I think we can help our volunteers by doing that. Okay. Did you hear um, Christina ask for that list, uh, Leah? Yeah, it might make sense for me to set something up, Christina, for us to kind of walk through it on the screen share. Sure. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, action items. Oh, still on Selectman's update, right? Yeah. Oh, I apologize. I want to personally thank <laughs> Dave for six uh, years on the board, six years and a month. Um, and a month. How do you get a month. month? And a month. That might be the longest term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's been, uh, you've done a lot of great things for the town. I appreciate you and Ellen and your kids' sacrifices. So thanks. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. I just want to thank the, the voters of Foxborough for giving me the opportunity to serve. I think the town is in a, a very good place, a stable leadership and public safety, public works. Um, obviously in town hall, Mike and obviously Bill. Um, you know, Mike, you know, not many people know, but that that fellow right there has two master's degrees. One in mechanical engineering and one in public administration. And Bill's got a master's degree in public administration, so. Um, regional planning, regional planning. Regional planning. <laughs> regional planning. Um, Highly educated, lots of experience. Um, you know, we in, in business, you always talk about turnover and how expensive turnover is, um, and having stable leadership is is the key to success. So, um, I'm just one member of a five-member board. Um, it's not all about one member. You come to the you come to the table, you debate the issues, and you always do what's best in the best interest of the town of Foxborough. 
And if you do that, everybody will, will be served well. But ultimately, the, the residents of Foxborough will, will be the winners. So that's how I try to, you know, operate as, as a member of the board. And, you know, I'll let other people judge whether, whether <laughs> I did a good job or not. So, but thank you to this board and all, all the past boards that I, I served on. I wish you guys good luck. Thanks, Thank you. It, it's not a coincidence the fact that the town's become a very stable place these last six years while you've been on the board these last six years. So, I don't know about that, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and I want to thank you for all the time underneath the table. You kept kicking me when I did something wrong. Um, <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, and. Uh, Best of luck not being on a board anymore. <laughs> I'm just glad you picked up on the uh, on the speedy meetings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. We'll go to action items. Action items. Uh, motion to accept a $600 donation to Veterans Services from American Legion Post 93. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion to approve tuition reimbursement in the amount of $5,730 for five courses for Officer Charles Gallagher. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion to approve a new town election workers with a term to expire August 30th, 2020. Second. Any further discussion? This was generally due to the fact that you got a new batch of um, um, workers. workers just to fill in during the COVID uh, <laughs> Right, situation. most of the election workers are, are usually senior workers, of, but to protect those seniors, um, uh, right. Bob Cutler uh, asked for additional help. Right, and that's why the short expiration term. Right. I was kind of surprised to see the, like all the different towns. I was expecting to see all like Foxborough people, but there's people from Westwood and down the Cape. Um, These are people that actually have some experience doing this stuff, so they, they just process it. And that's, as, uh, as Christina correctly pointed out, it's, um, it's a case where you didn't want to put the seniors in a position where they could potentially be exposed. Yeah. So now, it was, it was one actually, other question, just looking at the list quickly, scrolling through names, it looks like there's at least two town employees on this list, so how does that work? This is a paid gig, right? Um, yes, it is paid. Yeah. It is. So they can't actually hold two position, two paid positions. Yeah, so, I mean, looking at this list, uh, there's at least two that I saw quickly. So. Um, yeah, you cannot hold two positions, uh, paid positions. That's a conflict of interest. Well, so now what do we do? <laughs> I would just the ones that are that are paid uh, individuals cannot serve in that capacity. And they just get paid their town pay for the day. Um, Change of duty for the day. As long as they don't get paid to do that, yes, they can't. They can't receive two two paychecks. That's the bottom line. I don't know. So they could, they could volunteer their time if they wanted to. Or they couldn't take a vacation day from one job and do the other. Well, they, they could they could continue to receive their pay if they took a, if they took leave. You know, if they took a, a paid leave, they can do that. But they can't receive a second paycheck. Okay. They couldn't receive additional pay for it. Okay. So do we approve it pending um, discussion with Bob? about that issue um well isn't he going to need some of these workers potentially at the election on I think the fifth the, yeah. yeah i think the two the two that have the, that are paid can cannot effectively serve in that capacity unless there's a special unless they there is spe, it's a special uh consideration is there something something special in the statute that allows that that I'm not I'm not aware of? Can we uh, approve it? You can approve the list uh, my, uh, with the two that are not there. 
I mean, they take the two. They take the two out. Well, the other thing I don't know. Like I said, I quickly looked at this. I don't know every town employee, um, so I don't know. I don't recognize uh, anybody else. Third one from the bottom on the last page. Yeah, that's the one I recognize too. We approve it, like pending confirmation that they're volunteering their time or, or change of duties or something for the day and. Yeah, as long as, they, like I said, as long as they're not going to be getting paid any additional money, the, the issue is that if they take time, they can take their own personal leave or vacation leave to do it, they can certainly do it. They can but do it and not be getting get... two paychecks, they'd be paid right. PTO, so they'd be being paid right. by the town, and then paid as a, as a, as a worker. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to receive a paycheck for doing this work. Right, they would have to take paid time off to do it and volunteer their time to do it. Right. They couldn't, they couldn't get two pays. Correct. That's really the key. So I think if, if so I think you can, you can do that provided there isn't any, I think what you could do is approve it provided there isn't any conflicts with the, with the secondary employment. Anybody who has a secondary conflict has to, be, has to have that addressed before they can serve. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, that, that's fine. That leaves it broad brush too. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I'll accept the motion, the amended motion. And just in in um, board docs, I still see twelve thirty one twenty. So we're doing this with August thirtieth though yes. as the date. Yes. The uh, town clerk asked me to change that date. Um, they originally wanted um, December to possibly include the fall election, just in case there was a resurgence or this was still continuing. But then. Um, informed me today that he would just like it to end at uh, August 30th like the other regular election workers are scheduled to end. And we would just reappoint the new election workers for the fall in the fall. Thanks for clarifying. All right. Are you clear? Yeah. So do you want to reread it again? Okay. A motion to approve new town election workers with a term to expire on August 30th, 2020. And that each person appointed um, cannot have a, uh, a conflict, or must address a conflict if they have, if they're currently working as a town employee. There you go. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good point, Chris. Yeah, I just, good, good I, just that thought I looked I didn't at even, it earlier today. I, I didn't, didn't pick up on that. I, I appreciate you doing that. Yeah. Uh, fire department motion to approve a $100 donation from Mr. and Mrs. Charles Albert for the fire department gift fund. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. And I make a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> the quickest I'm, thing I'm, say. Say. I'm out of here. Right. Good night, everybody. Right. And